Hey, what's up guys? Quinn here. For today's video, we're going to be doing a species care guide for one of my absolute favorite fish, the convict cichlid. Before we get into it, I would ask you to please hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate your support and let's dive right in. So this is my 75 gallon Central and South American Predator Cichlid Tank. I've had a convict cichlid in this tank for around two years now and she has done great in it. She's by far the smallest fish in this tank at around 4 inches with a Jack Dempsey cichlid being around 6 inches, a Green Terror cichlid around 7 inches, and the Salvini cichlid being around 7 inches as well. Convict cichlids can get as big as 5 inches. These are all very aggressive fish, but the great thing about convicts is that they can hold their own against much bigger, aggressive fish. The convict is a great fish in this tank because she diverts some of the aggression from the other fish, but doesn't bring any added aggression with her size relative to the other fish. Convict cichlids come from Central America in countries such as Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. They live in lakes and streams that have a good amount of flow in the waters and have rocks and driftwood available for them to hide in. The tank setup should try and replicate this as much as possible. I recommend having plenty of driftwood and rocks in the tank along with a power head to increase water flow. My convict loves to settle underneath this log as well as behind the main centerpiece of driftwood. A great aspect of the convict cichlid is that they are extremely hardy fish. They can live in hard water with a pH level between 6.5 and 8 and a water temperature between 79 and 84 degrees. Even though they are hardy fish and can withstand levels slightly outside these ranges, it's important to give them an adequate tank environment for them to truly thrive and look the best in your tank. In terms of tank size, I would recommend no smaller than a 30 gallon tank for a non-breeding pair of convicts. However, beware if it's only those two in the tank as a 1v1 display of aggression can become problematic. I would recommend some dither fish in this type of tank that would take some of the attention away from each of them. If you have a breeding pair of convicts, a bigger tank such as 40 gallons and up is required when they eventually have fry. Speaking of which, Convicts are legendary breeders in the hobby. They are considered one of the easiest cichlids to breed. To help this process, a slightly warmer tank, 80 to 84 degrees, is recommended, along with plenty of caves and hiding spots for the female to lay her eggs. The male and female will protect the eggs and fry at all costs, so it's definitely recommended to not keep any other fish with this pair. Also, be ready to have a plan for what to do when the fry get larger, as you will need a place to rehome the fish so the tank doesn't become too crowded. A female convict can lay up to 300 eggs at a single time. Due to the high amount of breeding and fry, most fish stores won't buy them from breeders or take them in. You might get lucky with your fish store, but the supply and demand just isn't really there. That's why you'll likely see these fish selling for only a couple dollars in the US and almost every chain store will carry them. My favorite aspect of the convict cichlid is the appearance. They get their name from the black stripes along their body resembling old prison uniforms. The number of these stripes can vary depending on where you purchase them. The general rule of thumb is the more stripes, the better looking the fish. The females develop an orange coloration towards the back of their abdomens, bringing even more color to the already beautiful fish. Males can develop a slight nuchal hump as they reach maturity. There are also a few varieties of convicts known commonly as white convicts, pink convicts, or gold convicts, which contain a recessive gene and will have a different coloration. In terms of tank mates, I would recommend similar Central or South American cichlids, such as the Jack Dempsey, the Green Terror, the Salvini, the Texas Cichlid, and Firemouths. Severums, Electric Blue Acaras, 
and some geophagus could probably work out together. A good dither fish to break up some aggression for convicts are giant danios. I had a small school of five giant danios in my predator tank initially, and they did great in it. They also bring some life to the top part of the tank, as the predators typically stay near the bottom. Any type of pleco can also be kept with convicts. In terms of feeding, I feed my convict mostly a pellet diet. They seem to love the extreme aquatics big fella pellets. They are omnivores, so feeding them flakes every once in a while is also a good idea. As a treat, I'll feed them frozen brine shrimp as well. They seem to love the brine shrimp, but I would still keep the pellets as the standard food. As with any fish, the higher the quality of food, the more healthy and colorful the fish will be. In terms of feeding frequency, I feed them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and none during the weekend as I'm not in my classroom those days. I think this actually helps with not overfeeding the fish and compromising your water parameters. Keep those nitrates low. Their hardy nature, ease of care, and vibrant colors make them ideal for a beginner. In addition, they are also perfect for beginners looking to try out breeding fish. Just make sure to watch out for the aggression and territorial behavior when in breeding mode or if they're in small tanks, and I think you'll really enjoy keeping the convict cichlid. So guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you found the video informative and it helps you on your way to caring for a convict cichlid. Once again, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next week.